Let's continue. Let's divide a polynomial by a polynomial. So I have this binomial here. Before we actually do this problem by the methods that I'd like to share with you, I'd like to remind you of the fact that if, especially if you've seen this before, that this trinomial is factorable in the numerator. It can be factored into y minus 4 times y minus 4 because the two numbers whose product is a positive 16 and adds to be a negative 8 are both negative 4s. So again, could be factored like this. And the denominator is a y minus 4. And we have learned it can't be factored. It's 1 times y minus 4. And we have learned that if you have the same thing over the same thing, that that's equal to the number 1. And the answer to this problem is the binomial that's left over. It is the y minus 4. But not all polynomials are factorable. And so we can divide by the process of long division, like you did in arithmetic with numbers. So we're going to do this problem that way again. Just remember the answer is y minus 4. Um, but we're going to do it in an arithmetic way. So here's my original problem. And then I want to compare that to a long division problem from when you were younger. Let's go ahead and, and do this over here because I'm going to keep it up. Let's just take um, the number 23 and divide it into 4,875. So what you said to yourself when you were younger is you said, did 23 go into 4? No. But does 23 go into 48? Yeah. It goes in, it looks like to me, about two times. And we will put that 2 right above that 8. Because we knew 23 times 2 was 46. And what did you do next? Yeah, you subtracted. So you took 48 and subtracted 46. And that's a 2. And then our next step was to bring down the 7 and do that process over again. Let's go ahead and finish this up. 23 goes into 27 one time. And I'm going to bring that 1 times 23 down, and I'm going to subtract. And I'm going to get... Um, a five, uh, 4 here, I'm sorry. And then I'm going to bring down this 5, and I ask myself again, does 23 go into 45? Well, twice would be 46, so it's only going to go into there once. And therefore, I have a remainder of 22. And the way we often wrote this answer, sometimes you went on and got a decimal value, but most of the times you said that this was a mixed fraction. The answer was a mis mixed fraction. And it was the number 211 and 22 20 thirds. That was the solution to this arithmetic problem. That's how you wrote that answer. Remember, um, you could take the, the 211 by 23 and add 22 to it to get it in improper form. And that would be the 4875 divided by the 23. So if this times this plus this gave you 4875, then you knew that you got, um, you've done this correctly. Well, we're going to do this the same way. And we're going to set the y squared minus 8y, set this quotient up, and divide it by its divisor of y minus 4. I think I'm going to erase this word up here so we don't have to conflict with that. And so what I'm going to ask of you, let's see, um, I'm going to ask of you, 23 goes into 48 how many times? And you tell me twice. I'm going to say to you, y goes into y squared how many times? A lot of people tell me two times. Let me write that down, and I'm going to erase it. What I just asked you is I, I asked you, how many times does y go into y squared? And it goes into there y times. I won't ask it like that anymore. It's a little bit hard to hear. Instead, what I'm going to ask is I'm going to ask you to come up with something to put up here. You can put it right here. You can put it right here. Most people like to, to put this right over here. So I'm going to ask you, y times what gives you y squared? Because I, whatever you put up here, when you multiply it by this, I want it to match this y squared term. Now, the only reason I put the y above the 8y is because it's they're like terms. Um, it really could, actually, I'm actually in the habit of, and I think I'm going to stick with my habit. I'm in the habit of putting the y right here. And then I'm going to distribute the y times that y and times that minus 4, because 2 times 23 was 46. So y times y is y squared. I tried to make that happen. And y times a minus 4 is a minus 4y. And next, over here, in red, you subtracted. And so I have to subtract this polynomial from that polynomial. 
And when I subtract polynomials, I add the opposite. Or maybe you'd like to say to yourself that you're going to multiply this by a negative 1 and that by a negative 1. Or you're distributing a negative 1 through the group because you're subtracting or adding the opposite. These will always add to be 0. And then this minus 8y plus 4y adds to be a minus 4y. And then like you did over here, you bring down your 16 and you start the process over again. So I'm going to ask you now, I'm going to get rid of these zeros right here. I'm going to ask you, what number times y gives you a minus 4y? Exactly, I want that to match. And the number is a minus 4. These are going to descend. It was y to the first power, now I'm going down to the constant. And then you're just going to check for yourself and you say, was I right? Did a minus 4 times y give me a minus 4y? And then does a minus 4 times a minus 4, what does it give me? It gives me 16. And then you have to subtract, so you have to add the opposite. So you have to make this positive. And I use a color so that I can know that red always stands out over the black. The red is always the proper sign. So this one and this one add to be 0. And positive 16 and a minus 16 add to be 0. And this one has a remainder of y my, uh, I'm sorry, of 0. And so the answer is the y minus 4. Do you remember we got that just a bit ago? We got y minus 4 for the answer when we factored this um, trinomial into y minus 4 times y minus 4. Again, my answer right here. Let's do one more during this video clip. Let's go with, um, and I'm going to leave the arithmetic problem there. So let's go with um, x squared minus 10x minus 25. And sometimes we write it like this. I want to divide by x minus 5. And so, with that arithmetic thought in mind, the x squared minus 10x minus 25 needs to be divided by x minus 5. And so I ask you, what times x gives you x squared? x times x gives you x squared. And x times this minus, so it's got to be multiplied by this and by this, x times a minus 5 is a minus 5x. And now I change my signs. So let's make this negative and that positive. These will always disappear. And then these two, I'm sorry, I copied this wrong. I see this is supposed to have an x right here, of course, from the original problem. And a minus 10x and a positive 5x adds to be a minus 5x. And then I bring down my minus 25. And I start that process over again. So now I've forgotten. I'm not thinking about that anymore. Now I'm kind of going to say to myself, what number times x gives me a minus 5x? A minus 5 times x gives me a minus 5x. And a minus 5 times a minus 5 gives me a positive 25. But I have to subtract at this point. So I have to add the opposite. So I have to change this sign and change that sign. The first terms will always add to be 0. This minus 25 and minus 25 is a total of a minus 50. And finally, what it, that this means is that this was not factorable. It was not possible to come up with two numbers whose product is a negative 25 and adds to be a negative 10. Negative 5 and 5 are the only two numbers whose product is a negative 25 that could remotely come close to adding to be a negative 10, and they add to be 0. So it was not factorable. My answer to this problem is the x minus 5, 211, the x minus 5. I always put a plus sign right here, plus my remainder. See the remainder, the 22 over 23, plus my remainder of a negative 50 over my divisor, which was x minus 5. If you took this binomial times this binomial, if you took 23 times 211 and added 22 to it, so again, I'm not going to take the time x minus 5 times x minus 5 plus the negative 50, foiled it, added the negative 50, you would get x squared minus 10x minus 25. Just like over here, this times this plus this would give you the 4875. So you can check these. Um, one more video clip on this di long division. I call it long division um, by a polynomial. And I'm just going to make the problems a little bit bigger, and I'm going to put some coefficients on them. So part two is on its way.